Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another Guitar Wink podcast. How you doing? Troy McCubbin here. Uh, I am the host. You have no say in it. What's going on, man? How are you doing? You hanging in? Are we hanging in? Or is shit hit the fan? I feel shit has hit the fan. I see Australia is uh, having another rise in the coronavirus. <laughs> what the fuck, guys? What are you doing? What are you, copying America? Copying America? Come on, man. Get your shit together. I thought Australia, I was all proud because Australia was doing so well. We'd, uh, but we opened up too soon, like too many others. Come on, man, get your shit together. I believe Melbourne, Victoria is on lockdown. Um, yeah, <laughs> they've closed the borders. Man, 2020, what a year. Who'd have thought, right? Who'd have thought this shit was going to happen? But anyway, we're dealing with it, I guess, are we? I don't know. You tell me. I don't know what's going on. I'm just hiding out in my bunker. <laughs> Staying in the bunker, ordering on Amazon, ordering from the supermarket, trying to stay sane, picking up the guitar as much as possible. Um, kind of feel there's going to be this massive surgence of all these amazing bedroom guitar players now. Um, like we didn't have that before, right? And uh, no one's going to have any live experience <laughs> anymore. It's done. Bruce is calling it quits. He's done. He's like, fuck this shit. Time it comes back, I'll be done. Ah, I don't know. Who knows what's going to happen? I just... God, at some point, we're going to hit bottom and we're going to turn this shit around and uh, and get back on top. It can only get better at some point. Just remember, don't let the bastards get you down. Hang in there. Get healthy. Stay healthy. This is not a good time to get fat or put on more weight. Because apparently... That's a big, uh, big thing. If you're gonna get coronavirus and you got a, you're a little chunky, you're a bit of a chunky punky. It's gonna hurt you. So uh, now's a good time to exercise, eat healthy, keep the mind right. Man, don't. Just, yeah. Ah. Fucking ain't. What are you gonna do? But anyway, what are we gonna do? We're gonna do episode 220. Crikey's 220 episodes. You know how many hours this is of my life I will never get back? Of your life you will never get back. God, if you've just gone through this and... Wow. Well, if you have listened to all 220 episodes, I feel like I should send you something. I won't because I'm not going to the post office. But we commend you. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Today's episode is, with no exception, an amazing piece of entertainment that will take you to a new level of happiness I believe bullshit um, but we do have a guitarist on this is uh, Scott brought this guest on so we can blame Scott uh, no thanks Scott this is a good one it was fun it was Jonathan Kreisberg did I get that right Jonathan Jonathan Kreisberg Kreisberg uh, great bloke New York cat well he'll give you the rundown but um, a lot of fun. We had a lot of fun with Jonathan, and um, it was cool. It was cool to catch up. So really appreciate that, Jonathan. We're going to play a few tracks of Jonathan's here. I just grabbed some off the internet, Jonathan. Sorry, mate. <laughs> I had to get this get this podcast up and organized. But um, I think we've got a couple of shows with Jonathan. But yeah, check it out. He's uh, men's burning. A lot of fun stuff. Uh, we get to hear about his story. Another New York jazz guitarist, uh, or New York cat, who's living out there in the heat of it. But now, that's not the epicenter anymore. It's all over the world. So, ah, uh, uh, yeah, right. Um, all right, what else we got going on? So, uh, go to the Guitar Wank website because it's amazing, right? And uh, you can watch, listen to the podcast there, and you can go to Patreon. You get Bruce's Guitar Wank Minute. I think we're coming up to episode number 10. That's like 10 minutes of episode, of lessons from Bruce Foreman. And they're all snippets of amazing information that you can take to your grave with you. And uh, a lot of good stuff there from Bruce. A lot of great stuff. In under 60 seconds. Hot damn. Good shit. Um, yeah, so that's about it. What else we got? We've got Grumps TV. If you, you want to be entertained, chime in for that. Uh, but other than that, I hope you're well, you're staying healthy, your family's safe through, through these crazy times, and um, yeah, I hope you're tuning in. Leave us comments, spread the word, 
share it, do whatever you need to do to stay sane in these amazing, crazy times. This is Jonathan Kreisberg, episode 220. My name's Troy McCubbin. Thank you for listening to Guitar Wank. And uh, here's a track from uh, Jonathan. Check it out. And uh, find him on Spotify and all those other wonderful places. Later.
Hey, bitch, I can't hear you. Why can't I hear you? Why can't I hear Scott? He can't hear either one of us. Can you hear now? Hey, check, check, check. I know why. Yeah. I know why. Such a fucking Come inside, Scotty. Hang on. Hold your horses, toots. Check, 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 check. That's why. Hello? Hello. Aha. Uh -huh. I can hear you. Okay, we're good? Yeah. Good. Cool. Bruce? Yeah. Well, look at you. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Crikey's. Sorry about that. No, it wasn't you. It was it was it was this end. It's just uh, there's little tweaks I gotta do on this thing. Gallery view is better. Oh, hang on. We need. I'm waiting for ah Jonathan. Oh, he's gonna come in. Here he comes. There he Hello. is. Whoa! I told you not to eat that shit, man. <laughs> can, you, can you hear me? We can hear yeah. you. What are you eating? You're eating borscht again? <laughs> no, no I'm, I'm eating... Uh, oh, yeah. Sounds like... I don't have any jack, so I had to have doers and ginger ale, which is a weird combination. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it made your spoon stand up. Man, my spoon is sticking straight up right now. <laughs> this, should be on, we sh this should be on the show. Start rolling tape. Is that right? Jonathan, get a mate. Hey, yo, what's happening? Hey, go, mate. <laughs> All right, man. Have you ever met before, Troy? No, we I don't. We haven't. We haven't met. Even though we should have met. He just got out of prison. Unless you were in Joliet, you wouldn't know him, man. Yeah. What's funny is Troy. You look. You look like someone, and I can't put my finger on it. It's crazy. Um, Jesus. I can't remember if it's a famous actor or if it's a friend of mine. You know, I, I think got it's the, Bruce I, Jenner. <laughs> are we talking pre or post? <laughs> He looks like Bruce, he looks like Bruce Jenner's vagina. <laughs> Actually, my yeah, side ways, yeah. I resemble that. Um, no, I, I'm gonna, it's gonna hit me at some point. You, you totally remind me of some. No one ever told you that. It's yeah, I get it all. The, it's probably some famous model. Famous. Model. Yeah, a real, yeah, right. a real hot cool. chick. It's your breast that gave it away. Christy Turlington. That's it. <laughs> Hey With Troy, the... announce announce our guest and start the show officially. No, it's oh, yeah. your it's your guest. You announce him. Okay, well I will. <laughs> I'm not doing it. <laughs> welcome to podcast number six hundred and something. It feels like that anyway. <laughs> and I guess and, just let it. <laughs> and special guest from New York. Well, actually, I don't know if that's where you're from, but that's where you're living right now. We have Jonathan Kreisberg here, yeah. famous guitar star. Famous everything, famous porn star, guitar star, television star. He's not a real doctor, but he plays one on TV. <laughs> and here he is for your enlightenment and amusement. And by the way, you'll never get another gig after you do this podcast, ever. This is so, it. <laughs> this, is, this is the end of your career, buddy. You're going to get out of the business. Well, this is it, man. Yeah. We better make this shit count. Well, yeah, no one has ever worked after they've been on our <laughs> podcast ever. <laughs> hey, how, by the way, how's the sound? So who do you really want? To call up? Is this? <laughs> hey, is before we start, is the sound okay? Yeah, I hear you good. Uh, okay, sound, sounds good here. Okay, oh, perfect. What were you talking about, Bruce? Well, I think he should finally tell off all the people he wants to. If this is the end of everything, the first thing he <laughs> do is tell everybody off. Well, first of all, me or Scott. First thing we usually do on the show is we ask the guest to to ask him to tell us who his least favorite musicians are and why. <laughs> now, now I'm gonna have to go to Troy on this one. Troy, is this is this actually asked usually, or are they doing this? This to is me this is a series. This every episode we have this, and a lot of the guests will say, "I don't want to mention any names," and we call bullshit. And the funny thing is, it's obviously none of the guests ever listen to the podcast because they know that this was going to be asked. Right. Yeah, I know. I should I should know. No, well, I'm just kidding. We never say anything bad about anybody. Oh, no, no. Talk. Well, actually, you know, I have, you know, there's only one guy I think that I've really said anything really bad about. That's probably Virgil Donati. Oh, and Chick oh. Corea. 
Or oh, Chick Corea. Fuck that motherfucker. <laughs> but, you know, and, and, uh, I, I don't talk bad about people unless I'm drinking. <laughs> you know? Oh, right. So luckily uh, we're all right. And yeah. yeah. And yeah, Eric I'm Johnson. I'm non-alcoholic tonight. I'm, I've got lemon juice and honey. So, yeah. so oh, why? really, man? Why? It's, it's, it's for crazy. my aid. For your I've got oh, AIDS okay. again. Again. Oh. Yeah, got rid of it, but I got it again. Yeah. We, we should cue the Team America theme AIDS song. Well, it's July 4th, so, you know, we we're going to shove a Roman candle up his ass and light it. <laughs> I'm going to enjoy that. Man, I, th- I thought we were going to build up to this point. This was, I thought this was like going to be the peak of the. You know, no, this I've, I've, been, I've been drinking five hours, seconds. Baby. <laughs> you know, I've actually been on this show already for an hour and a half. I just, I'm glad you guys finally showed up. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> the guests have arrived. <laughs> Oh, well, hey. well, welcome, Jonathan, to uh, Guitar Wank. You can your career can only go nowhere from now on. But um, it's it's awesome to have you on the show, mate. This is like I mean, our fourth yeah. guest from New York. Um, oh yeah, and in like the last, we, we've had everyone on from New York. I don't think there's any more guitarists in New York, right? I don't think there's any people left in New York. They all left. <laughs> well, I made the jo- I made the joke today that um, you know. I actually found parking in like five seconds in downtown <laughs> Manhattan. And wow. I was like, that's wow. what it takes to actually do that. The pandemic Shoot. and you get parking. You need a pandemic, yeah. Where where in New York are you right now? So, so yeah, so like what Scott was asking for, like I was actually born in New York when I was, I oh. was, so I was born back when, you know, normal people lived in Manhattan, you know, now it's so expensive that you've got to be like really rich. So we lived uh, up Believe it or not, upstairs from a club called McKell's, um, which was kind of that had a lot of like Lee Morgan and a bunch of really heavy cats played there. And my dad would go down and listen. So that was pretty cool. My dad always liked good music. But then I moved to Miami when we moved to Miami when I was probably like five or something. So I grew up in Florida, not far from you were West Palm, right, Scott? Yeah, West Palm Beach. Yeah. 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 So, you know, then I grew up there, but I, I was always like a weird New York kid. Like I didn't really ever fit in, which was probably good. You know how it is when you don't fit in, you tend to practice more and play better. So, you know. Did you know any of those Miami guys that were down there, like Jocko and I guess Pat Metheny, Steve Morris, Othello? Those guys were all there uh, before I was of, of age. You know, I was probably. Okay. I, okay. I, I'm, 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 you know, a little bit younger. So I was probably 10 when all that was going on. You it's know, funny because I mean? you look a lot older than us. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> well, I played at Mikkel. See, yeah. I, yeah, I figured one of you guys knew that. I played at man. I was living in New York in the 70s. And I played there then. Well, that's when I was born in the 70s. So there you go. Wow. Wow. Yeah. wow. I was probably I was probably at your gigs like with the I mean, I, uh, I didn't be your father, man. When your dad <laughs> man, you know, I was, I'm gonna shave the beard and leave the mustache, and I think I might be a little surprised. <laughs> you know what Steve Cardinus said about you yesterday? I talked to him on the phone. Oh yeah, that, that I look good naked. Oh you know, he said <laughs> you're one of those guys who you were already playing your ass off when you were fifteen. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I don't know, but but I, I at some point, Scott, I want to play you some shit. Cause yesterday, I was because you know I'm starting this new like, uh, it's not on Patreon, but it's that kind of thing, like a club kind of thing, you know. Uh-huh. And one of the things I'm doing is offering all these uh, like weird MP3s, <laughs> like recordings, uh, like off off the cuff things, like strange things. And man, I've got, I had a, a trio in in Florida, you know, I was studying bebop, but I was really into fusion and rock and stuff. And man, I had this one tune and I heard it because back then I didn't know I was doing it, but it was just like, like my first record was when I was mostly playing Strat and I played the Gibson on one or two tunes and, and I was really being like a chameleon. Like you could hear it was me on all of them, mm-hmm. but it was like me doing my different cats, you know? Right, and, and the record was like you know the first tune was like a Holdsworth thing, the second tune was like a like a Schofield thing, the third was like a Jim Hall thing, the fourth was like a Frizzell thing. And I didn't know at the time I was doing that, but when I listen to it now, I'm like, well, yeah, that's me doing that, you know? Yeah. And th- we almost had a whole nother record in, that we could have recorded when I moved to New York, um, and the other guys didn't come. But that repertoire was pretty cool, and, I, and there was one tune that it was like. Hundred percent a tribal tech kind of thing. Like okay. it was like I heard that and I was like, well, that's what I was doing on that one, and I didn't know I was doing it. It was just me doing my homage to certain uh-huh. cats. You know? Gotcha. So I want to play you some of that at some point, okay, man. Definitely. It's, yeah. So yeah. When, how long did you stay in Miami before you moved back up to New York? 
yeah, so it was probably about a year after college. You know, I did the University of Miami thing. Um, oh, you did? You went yeah. to a few of them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. you know Whit Seidner and all those Of course, guys. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, we're, we're, we're friends How on did, Instagram. Did, yeah. Scott, did you go to school? Well, not after fourth grade, but <laughs> did I did go to school. Did you go to no, that I, school? I did. I went to. I couldn't afford University of Miami. I went to. I went to Florida Atlantic University in Boca Raton, but I only did the music classes. I didn't actually go to college to graduate. I just did the music courses, and that's it. And yeah, I don't know do if that, you know right? Chuck Moronic, but he's a really beautiful. I know about him. Pianist. He's like. Yeah. A, he's really great. He's like a Keith Jarrett type of guy. Really harmonically great. And that's the man. And also, Bill Prince was a guy down there who was a multi instrumentalist. He played trumpet, sax. Um, he played with Iris Sullivan a lot. Um, right. That's what I thought of when you said multi instrumentalist. And, yeah. and you know, when 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 I think about my schooling, uh, that's the two guys I think of because really the classes didn't honestly do that much for me. But just getting to hang with those two guys, that's why I'm glad I went there. But you know, of course. I would have loved to also gone to University of Miami because I know God everybody was down there and you guys had such good amazing players down. I do do you remember this jazz guitar player um, Gillis somebody Mike Gillis? Oh, I remember hearing his name around. You know, everyone's he was while... playing down there when I was young. Hey, hold yeah, it, yeah, okay. I've, Jonathan. I've worked out who you look like. This is what you. Oh. This is. Oh, I don't know if you see that. Uh, turn down the brightness. Oh, yeah, no, you know who looks more like that? My brother looks more like him. Really? Who's David Ar yeah. David Arquette, isn't it? David Arquette. Yeah, my brother looks more like him. Really? Yeah. I, wow. I, man, I get such a, a wide range of of people that that I look like and it goes from from so good to so bad. Oh, I got I, I know who you look. You look like George Clooney a little bit. I I've got that before. Yeah, that's yeah. what it is. Yeah. That's like you, that's like me. It's like you know, on a good day. I paid, you like, I paid Jonathan for that. Too, too like, bad like, the way let himself go, huh? Like you on a, yeah, like like you on a really you on a really good day look like him on a really bad day, you know. Uh, and that's that's and that's, that's, and that's still what good. Because I get because I because I, 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 I get like I get Ryan Gosling oh. on a. You know, on yeah, a, when, he, when, a... when he's on a really, really, really bad rough day, <laughs> like he's playing a derelict, you know, um, but it still works for me. You know, it's, you know, I'll take it, you know, but, but, you then, but I used to get like Jay Leno and all this weird shit. And, like... <laughs> I got, I was, I was in upstate New York and I got St uh, Spielberg because I, oh, yeah. I had I a hat see... on and my hair was all wet and the guy stopped yeah. me and he goes, Steven Spielberg. I was like, no. And he goes, Spielberg, Spielberg. I'm like, no, it's not fucking Spielberg. Fuck off. I was so me. mad. Got, it's better than me. I got Don Knotts. <laughs> Man. Oh, I also, got, I also used, to get, I used to get John Cleese sometimes. Where the fuck? <laughs> it's like anyone with a huge chin, basically. That's, that's how uh, I'm going to... Post this show. It's Ryan Gosling and George Clooney talk to Bruce and uh, Scott. Yeah, R Ryan Gosling and George Clooney get really banged up, <laughs> and they do an interview. <laughs> so, so let me ask you, again, Jonathan. <laughs> we have to do something serious on this show. Yeah, so I, we, I knew this so was going to be a problem. <laughs> so, when you were down there, did you know? Did you? Uh, okay, so you knew Whit Seidner. Well Whit, Whit, well, Whit was my, so, so, you know, I was lucky. So, so I went to, I was probably like, you know, in the public school system until my junior year of high school. And, you know, it was one day I was playing, like the, the teacher was trying to play something and I like, it was like, you know, some classical carcassi thing or something. And I was like, no, no, it's, it's like this. You know? <laughs> And she, she was like trained more as, as, you know, one of those, she learned lots of instruments. She was mainly a bass player, but she played some guitar. And, and she said like, you know what, you should go to this art school that they started, you know? So, so there was an arts high school that had started a couple of years earlier called New World School of the Arts. It, mm -hmm. It's like, it's like, it was like the LaGuardia thing was, you know, the fame kind of school in New York. They had moved a branch to, to Miami. If that had been there when you were my that age, you would have been at University of Miami with a scholarship. You know what I mean? Because 
what I did was was I said, okay, let me go do that. And I went in as a senior. So I just had one year. But I had one year with this cat, J.B. Dias, who, uh, you know, Bruce, you might know him because he's out yeah, in yeah, California. The Institute, now he's with the Monk Institute. Yeah, right. he's so, that up. Yeah. yeah, J.B. is like, as far as taking someone at that level, someone who's like talented and young but doesn't really know anything about the systems of jazz and learning tunes and, and lines and stuff, he's like the best teacher around because he just like gets you and he just puts you immediately on a program. And I was like this crazy, I just wanted to play modes over drones like all day, you know what I mean? <laughs> and, and he just kind of like, psh, 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 you know, like would get you like into this idea. Okay, learn some standards, like study these lines. Here's a bird line, go home and check it out and listen to what he's doing, you know? And that was great for me. So as a result, he also was good. Like I, I was the kind of kid that like, if you intimidated me, I, I reacted well to it. You know, I was like probably one, I was probably, I was basically like the male guitar version of like a young girl gymnast, you know? <laughs> so it was like, you know, you tell me what to do. And I can't did, unsee that. Did you get yeah, sexually yeah. assaulted too by the, by the health Man, doctor? I just, I, I just watched that last night. It, that is the most upsetting documentary I've ever seen. It's so fucked up. Our country's fucked. Forget it. <laughs> oh, look, look, we're on, we're on the air. Yeah. Can I tell you something? Well, there you yeah, go. Well, yeah, there you right. go. I, I feel molested already. But um, <laughs> no, but 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 basically, you know, um, no, I, I was just like he, he basically told me like you know, you know, if you go to this if you go to this audition and you know less than like you know a hundred fifty tunes, like they're just gonna laugh at you, you know. And and here I was like sixteen years old, and I just went home and I said, "Well, I'm gonna learn two standards a day or something for the next, you know." And and I I basically, you know, I I, w I went crazy learning standards. That was my big thing, you know. So basically, I got to the audition with Randall Dallahan. I don't know if you know him. He's a great. Teacher. I do know him. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And you know, he's got that Texas accent. And he says, "Well, Jonathan, you know, you know, you know some standards. You know, you know some tunes," and. Uh, and I said, oh, here it comes. Like, where are the laughing people going to drop out of the walls, you know? <laughs> and I said, yeah, you know, here's my list. I only know 85 standards, you know? And he said, 85 standards? You're only 16 years old. He's like, that's beautiful, you know? And, and I just, of course, was like, JB. <laughs> you know, like, just, you know, nights, like sleepless nights, like trying to memorize stable mates, you know? <laughs> um, so basic, but basically, you know, I, I kind of aced the audition. You know, I played like confirmation. I played some nice bebop shit, and I played enough that I got a scholarship. Which I agree with you, Scott. I would, and that's a big issue that I actually have feelings about, about that almost make me want to start a school. You know that that there's the way the the university thing is functions now. It's just not practical for a young you know, talented musician who doesn't come from means. You know? Yeah, I mean, it sure wasn't practical for me because it was, I don't know how much it was, but for us, it was way pricey, to, way too pricey. Oh, are you kidding? You know what it is now? Oh, my God, man. Yeah. It's, people are paying 40, well, 50 grand a year for school. Well, yeah, you know, I wow. mean, it's, it's like 30 grand a year just for MI. And wow. I think, what, at USC? How much is it a year at USC, Bruce? I think that's 60. Jesus. What? <laughs> Jeez. Expensive, man. Do you, you have know? to blow people as well? But, uh, no, that, no, you got. You have to. You have to. You actually. You have to pay extra for that. He just, yeah. he just does that out of the goodness of his heart. You know, but uh, no, yeah, it's it's a, a strange time. You know, it's a strange are, time. There are there are people who are on scholarships and stuff. Yeah, you know? of course, of course, of course. Like Miami is has a huge. You know, most most of their guys are do get a, a lot of help. Yeah, you know? I mean, Miami I mean, what, right now that's really, great. That's yeah. great. I mean, when I was there, there wasn't much money being given out. You know, it was. Yeah. That's why I felt really lucky that because it was, it was especially guitar because they used to give the scholarship to a trumpeter. You know what I mean? Like because they needed the instrument for the big band or something. But guitar was really hard to get a scholarship. I was you know? going to ask you that. Did you play in that big band? Yeah, I was the CJB cat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that yeah. was when I heard that big band. Lindsey Blair was the guitar player. Yeah, Lindsey was the TA my first year. Yeah, yeah and let me tell you, man, that band was fucking killing, man. Yeah, that yeah, was yeah. a it's... badass band. Yeah, we were playing was great. everything from Duke Ellington to Weather Report. Yeah, I mean, Bre it was... we did Brecker Brothers too. That was fun. It was a yeah. serious band. And, you know, I was young and I was like, I really hadn't heard that many big bands. And when I heard 
U right. of M big band for the first time, I was pretty much blown away. Yeah, they're, like, they're one of the best in the country. Yeah, amazing. They were yeah. fucking burning, man. It was yeah. ridiculous. I was yeah, just yeah. so impressed by them. Did you hear Lindsay with them when he was there as an undergrad or when he went back as a grad? I really don't know. I Well, I, I can I tell you, it, if it was in the 90s, it was when he went back as a no, grad. No, no, it was way before that. This would, oh, have, so been, uh, this would have been in the, the late 70s. How so. cool. That's when, Yeah, because, you know, I know, well, first of all, Lindsay is, is one of our direct links, you know, because he was my first teacher mm -hmm. as a, when I had a grad assistant teacher my first year. Mm hmm and he he thought the world of you, man. He, he I mean, because I already loved your playing. There's I mean, one. From, what? There's, There's one. There's one. <laughs> exactly. Dude, I got such fans on this show. You know, I don't know why they keep me here. Really, I have no idea. It was crazy because he had this envelope with self-addressed from from Scott with a, a hundred dollar bill in it. So I don't know. Yeah, you know. That's right. No, but he he, <laughs> he used to say he used to say to me he'd say uh, he'd say like, man you think he sounds good on tribal tech stuff he said you should have heard him in the practice room with me playing over giant steps that kind of shit like he uh, you know he it, was talking about just I've your, known him for your... such a long time you know he used to teach at mi wow yeah yeah and, yeah. and he was at mi for many years before he finally moved back to florida and we're still yeah. in touch you know i we still talk every once in a while i guess that's where he met his wife too right like out there i think and, so yeah yeah i was i was one of the first guys to visit in the hospital when dylan was born with his, his son because wow. i was i was actually house sitting for them around that time wow yeah. so, uh, that's amazing you know you see i don't really know randall dalahan that well i i only met him once when i heard him play i i went down to lauderdale to hear him play oh cool and mike gillis played that guy I was telling you about he nice. was kind of a big guy big huge guy and he was he was more of a i guess he was more of a bebop guy than randall Right, Randall right. was more fusion-y, kind of had more of a, a modern type of tone, you know. It's, it's so tracks. funny because by the time I got to school, Randall was kind of sounding like Jim Hall. Like, uh -huh, wow. Like he really played, I, I had always heard about that and I heard recordings later of him and I said, oh, okay. But no, when I came to school, he was doing a lot of duos with Vince Maggio, the piano teacher. Mm -hmm. And they were doing, he just, it sounded a lot like, yeah, like Jim Hall kind of like he could play any standard, any key, and like, you know, could, mm -hmm. could come up with chord solo arrangements just instantly, you know, that was, yeah. I learned a lot about chord, chord work with him, and, and uh, he was a great teacher. Um, Is he still there? No, he retired about, uh, I want to say five years ago, six years ago, something like that, okay. yeah. Oh, that's right, because yeah. he's older than... He's even older than me. So what is he? Is he like 68, 69 years old or something? Yeah, that's a good yeah. question. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. but that's cool. I had, you know, I didn't really know that, that you were a Miami guy. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah. and, and, I, and I, I don't, well, the other thing I was curious, I thought about this when I was listening to those old tracks of mine and listening to your new record, which is mind-blowing, great, um, um, was that I didn't know if you knew that you know, even though I was always studying bebop and playing jazz, that I that I really played a lot of fusion and progressive rock and stuff. I didn't know if you huh. knew that. I didn't you know? know. No, oh, man. I mean, it's yeah. It's I mean, I, that's a it's a huge part of my background. You know, that's it's it's, oh. it's um, I was you know my probably my you know my two biggest influences are probably if I had to I don't really believe in that because I have so many different influences. But if I had to yeah. nail them down, it's probably. You know Matheny and Holdsworth. That's like so, and, and I used to be able to kind of mimic both of them. I mean, I had I, I learned a lot from them. You know, wow. Um, so you know, the whole the whole the Holdsworth side. That. Go ahead. No, I was just gonna say you might not have heard, but I used to play, you know, very much like that style at some point. You know. Wow. You know, Kurt told me Kurt Rosenwinkel told yeah, me yeah. The time that, and I had no idea. He says he came up playing fusion. You know, like he he started playing fusion, realized that really wasn't his thing. Right. You know, I and, think that's that's less true about him than it is about me. Yeah. I think I think that that's he flirted with it, but I mean, I was right. really playing fusion. I mean, I, I right. you know I had a band that was touring the country playing fusion. You know? Oh wow! Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. And no, you I mean, made your money from that, I'm sure. <laughs> man, we had such man. You know, we had such a great time, man. It was like that was like three guys in a van. Yeah. We actually crossed. You wouldn't remember this either, but we actually crossed paths with you guys. We were on tour somewhere. I think it was like D.C. or Baltimore. Uh huh. And we played one night, and we had a night off, and you guys played the next night, and we actually came to your show. Where was that? In in uh, in. Uh, I think it was Baltimore. News Alley. 
No. Oh, it might have been a um, something head. Something head. Oh, here we go. I knew we were going down this road. Something head, yeah. eh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was either the boar's head or some shit. It was in. It was in Baltimore. I can't. I can't remember. Yeah, I, I don't know if I would remember yeah. either. I yeah. want to say it was on the water somewhere. Sounds yes. like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Head yeah, on yeah, the yeah. water. Yeah. Head underwater. Yeah. Head, head. underwater. But you know, we did we did that same thing, man. We probably did six tours in that stupid van, that Tribal Tech <laughs> Ford Econoline. Well, there you go. And we yeah. would come back after touring for about four weeks, and and we'd be able to pay the guys, if, you know, usually maybe five hundred a week if we were lucky. And then right. me and Willis would split the money that's left over, and usually be maybe a couple hundred bucks left. Right. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. No, that was, that was, you know, but you probably had a blast though. You know, yeah, I mean, like, it was that fun, was, man. Yeah, sure. It wasn't, it yeah. wasn't about making money. That's for sure. But no, yeah, I, it was yeah, a lot of fun. I mean, that's the irony is like, actually, yeah, I, I make more money as a jazz guitar player than I did as a fusion guitar player. That's amazing. But, man. but, but, you know, then again, I was a kid then I, no one really knew who I was that much, you know? So we were, but well, did you, um, you, I just on these fusion tours, did you guys actually, did you guys see any women on those tours or like, yeah, were there I, the girls there too? Or just, just... I was, I, I was like, I was, I was just, I had a girlfriend and I was just thinking about, I mean, I remember meeting <laughs> girls on those tours, but I, I was like, so faithful and just practicing and barely sleeping, you know, we were driving all, all night to get to the next place. So I hate to say it, but I wasn't even really thinking about it much at that point. So there I mean, was, I was all, girls actually was, went to the show. Oh, uh, I think there was girls at the shows. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They thought well, I looked I, like I, Ryan. I they thought I looked like Ryan Gosling or John Cleese. <laughs> they were really into it. You yeah. know, I got to tell you there, I mean, there are certain countries that we play in, in Europe where you won't see very many girls, but there's a lot of places where there's quite a few women at our man, shows, and I'm man, like, wow, that's man, oh yeah, Europe. Cool. Europe is totally different. I mean, Europe is yeah. just, you know, Asia New, too. I always say New York. Yeah, I mean, basically everywhere except America, cities yeah. besides New York. Yeah. You know? Right. I, I, in L.A. In L.A., I mean, you know, we have all types of people, like all different ages, all different right. genders. You know, yeah. so I don't know. Yeah, that's that's a weird like. Oh, there were genders like four of them, six of them, <laughs> eight of them. No, man. I'm. I mean, I'm. I'm saying like when I play like at the Blue Whale in L.A., it's like all different types of people there and, oh, and all yeah. different age ranges. You know, it's like, I, but it is something that bugs me. Like when I play in you know some other some other city in America, and it's all dudes. It's weird. I mean, it does hit me weird. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's it just says something to me about what's happening right now culturally you know i think it's it's you know it's it's a funny thing you know although there's always been i guess diff that's always been a thing like if someone told me something really funny uh, 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 scott is going to particularly like this he said he said that in the 70s if you know if you, you there's two major fusion bands you know and they were piano players you know he's like you'd go to chick's show and it was all dudes that returned to forever and then you'd go see herbie and there'd be a lot of women, yeah. you know? And I thought that was pretty interesting because they're both actually in the same genre, but maybe something about the kind, the way they were playing or something, you know? You know, when I played with Zolinal, there were lots of women all the time. Oh, that's crazy. And they had, and they, yeah, right. Lots yeah, yeah. of women. And and also with Jean-Luc Ponty. Yeah, um, yeah. Tons of women. Yeah, I think I think it has something to do with the, the aesthetic of the music, actually. Dick I think was the same thing as... Yeah, I mean, it's the same thing is true about <laughs> jazz. There's different kinds of jazz yeah. that, that just does that, you know. That I think that you just may, maybe it has to do with uh, the incentive behind the music or something, you know. What what you're well, what you what you're trying to say, you know. No, there's a there's a certain oh. amount of uh, there's a certain amount of bluesiness to what Zawinul was doing. You know, there's and, and and also we had vocalists and maybe just help. also like overt you know. emo emotion, like yeah. it was very emotional. A lot of that yeah, music, I thought know? so. The yeah, yeah. thing was more about chops and, and right. Uh, you know, but you know what? I used to kid Alan and tell him, not only are there no girls at your gig, there's no girls at the surrounding malls, like for a mile around. <laughs> yeah, I, I have to say, Alan's <laughs> concerts were really bleak in that yeah. way. But well, the truth. But the truth yeah. is you're so busy staring at his hands that you don't even notice. You know, yeah. you're just like, what the, you know. Yeah. 
Man, I just listened to this. I, 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 I hadn't, Scott, we talked about having uh, recordings in your car, you know, and listening to them repeatedly. Mm -hmm. um, one of the ones I had is the live Allen stuff from Japan in the, in the 90s. You know mm -hmm. that one? It's called Then. I've never heard that one. Uh -uh. Man, you got to hear that one. Some serious stuff. It's huh? so serious, man. Yeah. It's so serious. It's really him in his prime live and live you know he, he could be sometimes it could just be like a, like a chop fest you know even though of course even when he's playing chops fest his lines are so incredible yeah. but there's a version of that too non-brood condiment i think even i always love his albums because he has that kind of composer's head and a lot of mo nice melodies and stuff right but of all of it i have to say that i think that's the best solo i've ever heard him play it's unbelievable there's a line yeah. at the end it's like it's one of those lines that just keeps going, and, you, and at one point you start laughing because it's so good, and then it keeps going like <laughs> another twenty bars, you know, and it's it's just it's crazy. It, yeah, is a, there a keyboards one. on that record? That's, or? Yeah, that's Steve Hunt okay. and, and Jimmy Johnson and 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 Gary. Yeah. You know, I always like to listen to Alan with, with when he has a keyboard player because I can hear 100%. what he's saying over the changes. Hundred percent, hundred percent. I think he's not a chord tones guy; he's more of a linear guy. So exactly. it's easy to hear the changes, hear, exactly. hear what he's doing over the changes when there's a keyboard player. 100%. And there's a lot of sax players like that, too. Like It's like guys that play more up in the extensions, you need the chord. You yeah. know, like Mark Mark Turner, who I love, is one of my favorite saxophones. He's one of my favorites, too. But I don't want to hear him in a trio. I, uh -huh. like him with, I like him with chords, you know, because he's he's just so, you know, you could say it's it's... It's that he just likes playing up there. That's like yeah. it's like his that's his 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 playground, his briar patch. He likes to be up there, mm -hmm. you know. But yeah, someone like Sonny Rollins is down in the chord, and of like there's course. no bass and no I mean, no chords, and you and you don't miss it yeah. at all, you know. But those guys who are up there in the extensions and stuff, if there's no chords being played behind them, sometimes it sounds avant-garde. It sounds like exactly. you can't really tell. Yeah, what's he pulling against? <laughs> you know, yeah, it's yeah. hard. It's hard to yeah. it's hard to tell. Of course, that goes too when you have a bass player that doesn't play roots. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's true. That's true. You know, like yeah. like I had an argument with a bass player. I'm not going to mention any names. But <sighs> we were going to play giant steps, and this guy was landing on the third of all these chords. And I'm going, dude, you know, as an improviser, we're 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 kind of trained to land on a lot of thirds too. Right. But we're right. landing on the yeah, sixth. So <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. <laughs> it doesn't sound good. You got to play the fucking roots. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. That's right. No, I mean, you know, there's a, there's a certain. I mean, that's. I hear that, and you're playing too. Yeah, you and I are probably both that way, like grounded, in that way. Like you a like to bit more than to yeah. Balance it, balance it. You know, and and yeah. it, it's just that. They're both cool, but yeah, with Alan, a hundred percent agree. I, I like him with chords, you know, unless it's a tune where he's, it's like a thing where they drops out and then it comes back at some point or something. Sure. Of course, you know, sure. but but I agree. It's just that's his main strong suit is the way he plays against chords. You know, his his whole yeah. the way he plays out and stretches the harmony is yeah. so unique. It's like train, but it's almost like, I mean, I've transcribed a bunch, and some of it is not even. It's actually, believe it or not, more organic than Train. Like Train is still systemat systematic in his way, you know. But some of the stuff Alan does is like he's actually hearing that shit. Yeah, and I know, man. I I I haven't transcribed probably as much as you have, but the stuff that I did transcribe, it's like when you hear him when he's actually doing over the chords. Yeah. Go, wow, this is really stuff. Yeah, it's, it's, like it's real all stuff. stuff yeah. That, yeah. That is actually mind-bogglingly somehow fitting in the chords exactly when the chord changes which they change pretty often yeah, yeah, yeah. He's there yeah, yeah, like, yeah he's really a master of chord changes even yeah. though he's not bebop sounding at all right right he still is a master of chord changes like he's right in the chord yeah. but sometimes if there's no keyboard player that's hard to hear yeah especially for some so, of the changes he writes yeah, yeah yeah because the changes are kind of unique but what cracks me up is when you'll hear a little bebop thing happen and right. you go, oh, he actually knows what that is. You know, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because uh, it's interesting for a completely untrained guy. Like, he just. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah, he just. I, I think he's one of those guys he hears it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you know? He just hears it. I guess there's a bunch of guys. You know, Tavaloni, <laughs> Steve Tavaloni is a oh, yeah. saxophone player that I've played a lot with and Kinsey's played a lot with. Yeah. And that's another guy that, not technically trained, 
he just hears the most amazing shit and plays the wow. most amazing lines. He's my favorite saxophone player on the West Coast. Yeah, and, I got to hear um, him some more. I mean, the few times I heard him, I really liked him. Yeah. He's a motherfucker, man. Yeah. yeah. So good. But anyway, well, let's talk about you. <laughs> sure. Sure, man. <laughs> Enough talking about me. Let's talk about my latest album. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like so, that. <laughs> so hold on. Why did you, when did you end up in New York from my, um, from Florida? Yeah, I mean, so why so would I... you leave Florida? They're so together down there. Oh, yeah, man. We love Florida. <laughs> They're all ex-cons. Oh, yeah. Well, now look at them. The rest of the country's Well, actually, California is not much better, I guess. You guys are both, you and Florida are leading the charge with the COVID cases. <laughs> yeah, we're smart. Yeah. We're number one. <laughs> so, well, ba basically, you know, you know, I finished school. We, we did one of those tours with my old trio from Miami up the coast. And I went out, and I, I think I heard maybe like Joel Fromm and Ari Honig, and actually I did a show with Rosenwinkel too. We did a show together, um, a double bill when I was still in Miami, um, and I just heard all these great players, and I was like, man, I got to go to New York. I mean, there's just, and it was calling me, it was calling my blood as well. You know what I mean? Like I, I, I was born there, and I, like I said, I never fit in in Miami, you know. So I felt like this is where I need to be. And I told the guys in my band, I said, if you guys want to come, that's cool. If you don't, I get it. You know, I'm going to New York, you know. And they, they, they both had, you know, I guess girlfriends and lives in Miami. They, they didn't want to kind of, it was scary to move to New York at that point, you know. Um, you could still get mugged in New York. Now you, now you got to pay people to mug you. <laughs> um, they had Disney Light. They had Dis Disneyland Times exactly. Square yet. That's right. I remember but, when it wasn't Disney. I remember it was all oh, drug dealers and hookers. It was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it had funk, you know, and musicians and artists lived in Manhattan, you know, it was a crazy. Yeah. So I caught the tail end of that, you know, right before Rudy came in, you know, uh -huh. but uh, it was great. You know, I just, I just went up there and hustled a bunch of little solo and trio gigs and stuff. And I just got to know people right away. And I actually went through a thing, you know, where I was almost having a reaction to, maybe like kind of what Kurt was saying, where I just kind of realized like, I love fusion, but I was, I also loved, you know, extreme dynamics and I love standards and I love the bebop language. And I wanted, I hadn't figured out how I was going to put them all together, you know? And I felt like the thing I was doing at the time, like I told you was like, almost like this chameleon thing. Like I was doing these different versions of myself. And I just said, you know what? Also, I felt like there was some deficiencies in my, even in a way, my line concept, you know, there's something about fusion that's so open and it's so like, you know, it's, it's, and I, when I say fusion, I actually even put like, to me, fusion, I argue that fusion didn't start when most people say fusion start. I think fusion started with train and Elvin, you know, stretching out, playing for like 20 minutes. Playing over one chord for a yeah. long time. And, and Elvin's sure. bashing the shit and Train's just stretching sure. as far as he can go with emotionally and linear and everything, you know. Mm -hmm. And I love that. That's a huge part of me. Mm -hmm. But I also love Lenny Tristano. I also love Bird. I also love all this other stuff that happened before Train. Mm -hmm. So when I moved to New York, I said, you know what? I need to really go into that. Like I, I didn't go far enough into that yet, you know. So I spent two or three years there just playing these little gigs, plugging straight into my amp, you know, learning hundreds of standards, studying Tristano, studying Bird, studying, you know, even more modern guys like Keith, but more like his trio stuff, you know, mm -hmm. like just, just play how to play jazz, basically, you know. Um, there was something about the feeling of what I was doing with the first trio where it was like really extroverted. And I was using all kinds of, I had a rack and I was experimenting with all kinds of different influences from around the world and it was really open it was about trying to pull people in like come come in come in you know which is cool i i, I that's like like you said like the, to me that's what zawinul was doing that's what herbie did at some point you know that's a uh, you know great music that does that but for me i just saw that i wasn't those guys yet so i needed to be those guys also came up being great jazz musicians you know those what guys I mean? had already done what exactly
Thank you.